What did I do today? Oh, okay, well, what did I do yesterday? Um, yesterday I went running, which I don't usually do because I have crap legs. I have shin splints. Um, yeah, but I stretch for it and stuff because I'm like, you know what? I need to do something active, and I can't afford the gym anymore. <laughs> my teeth look like this one is I don't know um so today I went to the what was it called it's called the um Tokyo Employment Service Center for Foreigners um which is basically what it sounds like um you go to them you give them your info, um, and they uh, they punch it into a computer, and they pull up the job listings they have, and they pimp you. So I walked out of there. Apparently, like number one, I'm an American and I speak English, so there's already a plethora of opportunities for me just because I'm a teacher. Um, but if I don't want to teach, there are apparently options. Because, um, in talking to me, they determined that my Japanese level was sufficient to apply for, like, jobs that require low-level Japanese. Like office jobs. I don't know if... I think I was... YouTubing back then, but, um, my second job in the United States, my first job was Forever 21. Fuck that. My second job was working at a massage school. I was reception, administrative assistant, anything monkey, basically. And I loved it. Loved that job. I worked there for a year and a half. And... Oh, it was just amazing. I just loved that job. I loved the people that I worked with. I loved the actual work. Like, it was awesome. I love working in an office. I know some people would rather kill themselves than sit at a computer all day. I can think of nothing else that I would love to do. So, so th she sent me out with um, these, which are job listings. Um, and they talk about the kind of job it is and the payment and where it is and... Um, how long the contract is for and that kind of thing um, and most of them pay pretty pretty damn well um, actually the one that pays the least is the one that is a teaching job no surprise there um, but uh, yeah so she um she called all these offices because I told her straight up I was like okay but talking to me is deceptive because I speak a hell of a lot better than I can read I can't read kanji not entirely true I can read about 150 200 kanji but it's like the easy kanji it's like did you take Japanese in university for more than a term you probably know these kanji um and that's about it really. So I was like, okay, but like on a computer, yes, I can type it in because I can type in the Romanji and it will generate the kanji for me and I can usually determine which one is the right one. But when I, if I have to write something, I need to have a reference to look at because I won't remember. Um, or like when I'm reading something, I can't read properly. I have to check everything. Um, like, I just, I'm really, like, my reading kanji is very poor, very low. I speak fine. Reading is shit. So, I told her that. I was like, I know I, I'm talking to you now, I'm speaking with you now, but these papers that you're handing me, I, I can't read 95% of this. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm like, I don't know what these say. Um... And so she called each of these offices, and she, she literally started off by saying, I have a 24-year-old female American uh, who was an English teacher, and she speaks Japanese pretty well, but she can't read kanji. 
uh, is this going to be a problem? And out of the, there was a stack of six. One of them was a preschool, so she was like, let's put that on the back burner, because I was like, mm. And then one of them was like, yeah, she kind of needs to read. But these other four were like, sure, you know, that sounds good. Like, she doesn't really, like, if she can type it on a computer, we're fine. She doesn't actually have to read. So, <laughs> so there's, uh, there's that. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited actually about these. Um, yeah, it just, it's just nice to know that I have, I like, I don't even know if I'm going to get any of these. It's just nice to have options. Um, and it's nice to know that there's this office that I can go to who will help me do this. Um, they did tell me I need to write a Japanese resume, which obviously I've never done. Uh, every job I've ever applied to in Japan used a U.S. resume. I did not use a Japanese resume. And Japanese resumes are in a different format than American resumes. Um, generally speaking, in a U.S. resume, you have, you start off with your, your objective, right, your job goals, basically. Then you do your job history, but you start with the newest and then go back in time. And then you do education history and then references. And a Japanese resume, there's more than one part to it, and you don't always need all the parts. So the one that they, they gave me a whole bunch of example ones, but the ones that I, I took them home to Katsu and was like, which should I do? <laughs> and um, so I ended up picking this one because it was for someone who does, someone young, who doesn't have a lot of job experience. And um, it's just more simple. Um, so the first thing that you put is the position you're applying for. Second is the reason for applying, which is a full description paragraph of what, how you think you would be good at the job and what you want from the job. Then your job history, starting with the oldest and moving forward in time. And then what is called a JICO PR, which is basically a personal statement, like what's, what are your skills, why are you a good choice for this job? But also kind of like, what what kind of person are you? What kind of a worker are you? So, mine, um, so I wrote that. Like, I did the job history first, and then I wrote that. And, um, <laughs> I think, like, I probably talked more about, like, my work philosophies rather than skill sets because I think that that they need to know where because I mean all my job histories are teaching which is a totally different ball game from office work but I wanted to impress upon them that I want to do something else I don't want to be a teacher forever I want to try something new I want to do something hard um so, I talked about, you know, my sort of life philosophy, which is basically, if you're going to do something, do it right. Um, which I, I reworded as, you have no choice but to do something well. Um, because that's kind of how I feel like, if you're going to do it, do it well or don't do it. But don't half-ass it. Um, and then I talked about how I think that I'm good at helping people do that, helping people, if, if they have the will to try something, I'm willing to help them with it. I would love to help them with it. That I think that that's the best kind of pursuit that a person can have, is to better themselves. And that I have always been driven by that need to be a better person, need to be better at what I am, need to improve, need to do something as best as I can do it. Um, which really has been something that's sort of been a factor my entire life. Um, being homeschooled um, was a lot of... When you're homeschooled, people, you know... <laughs> I used to get really bothered by the fact that people would ask me what grade I was in and I could never answer because I didn't 
fit in a grade description. Um, I started homeschooling when I was in first grade, and then I finished when I was 16 and started college. So I finished 12th grade work when I was 16. But that kind of messes up the scale. Like, like was I two grades ahead? When was I two grades ahead? What like? It was. It's just really hard to tell. So, you know, when I started college from 16 as a homeschooler, I had no schooling history. I had no GPA. I had no, I had nothing. So I had to do everything as best that I could do it because it was, <laughs> it was the first time anybody would be watching me do what I had to do. Um, and it was the first time I was being held to any kind of standard outside of know what my mom wanted me to do so you know I went through that and then my last year you know I did two years worth of work in one year um, I took more than a, I took a, a double credit load for three credits three terms straight and um, and I took two summers straight to finish um, and it was hard, but I had to do it, and I wasn't gonna keep fucking around. I was tired of it. I was really tired. Of it. I never wanted to screw around in college. It's just things didn't always work out the way I wanted them to, but that last year, I just kept thinking, I want to be done. I want to be done. I want to be done. So I just pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed myself until I finished, and I did it. And then, you know, Korea came, and Korea, um, happened. So, and that also, like, I taught all age groups. I taught all levels. I taught, I taught so many people and so many kids in so many different environments. And I just, for each one, I started each one thinking, I've got to give this my all. i got to do this 100%. Because I just don't know how to do anything except that. Um, which is part of the problem um, with teaching is that I don't do anything less than 100% and it upsets me when people do. I hate half-assing. I hate when people deliberately don't try. Like, it's one thing to try and to fail. I applaud effort. I think Effort will get you a lot of things. I think that if you just try something, you can get pretty far. But I think a lot of people don't want to try, and a lot of students don't want to try, and their parents don't think it's appropriate to try to make them. So when I push students to be better, to try harder, to give more, that's when we get complaints, and that's where I run into problems. So by stating that as something that's a big part of my personality, a big part of who I am and how I work, um, I think will sort of highlight that factor and make it easier for me to find a job that is suited to that sort of attitude. Um, and I also said that, because I do, I do make an effort to learn something from every day. Um, because I think that's important too. Um, you should never stop learning. You should never give up on learning. You shouldn't... Our brains are such an incredibly complex and magical thing. There is so much you can fit in one brain. Why, why would you stop? Why would you even try to stop? Just, even if it's one little thing every day, you know, that's 365 things in a year. That's a lot. <laughs> and, you know, you live a long time. So just put it in there. Jam it in your head. Everything. So I added that, you know, even like my Japanese is not the best. I'm first to admit that. My Japanese is mid-level. I can't read for shit, but I try. I actually do have kanji practice books. And I have kanji flashcards. And I look at them regularly. 
Um, it's not for lack of trying. <laughs> I really am trying with Gachi. It's just really hard for me. So, you know, but I think that in a work environment where there's more of an expectation for me to actually learn things and remember things and be good at something, um, I'm more inclined to do it. I have, not that I have more motivation to do it, but I think that I'll, it'll be easier for me. So, um, and I also added that I try to do everything that I do with a smile. Because if you're not smiling, you're not happy. And if you're not happy, you shouldn't be there. Life philosophy summed up. Um, which is something that my father said to me. Because um, I was talking... There was, a, there was a period where I really genuinely wanted to drop out of college. Um, I just hated it. I hated the work. I hated... I didn't hate the work. I hated the way I had to do the work. Um, I hated the hoops. That university in the U.S. is, for undergrad, is not about free thinking at all. In fact, the more you free think, the worse off you're going to be. So, as a free thinker, it was really hard for me to force myself to repeat someone else's ideas back at them even when I disagreed um, that was really hard for me but my father said to me um, both my parents were quite insistent that I should stay in school and I'm glad that they were because I wouldn't be here but um, but my father also said to me when I was transferring schools um, that I should place happiness before anything else. That that my my happiness is more important than anything else. And that if I was doing something that was making me unhappy, I shouldn't be doing it. Um, and I think coming out of this last teaching job, like coming out of Korea, that was a big one where it's like, why? <laughs> Why was I there? Um, and you know, some Korea works for some people. Some people really love it there. And I tried, really did, but it just never quite... It just, every time I gave it a chance, it let me down. So, I think that, you know, I came out of Korea knowing that, that I should sort of trust my instincts a little bit more and that if something seems off it probably is um, and that if something really awful happens there's probably a reason for it so coming out of this teaching last teaching job um, I just sort of remembered how unhappy I was like I was happy because I was living in Japan and I was happy because I had friends here I was happy because I just really love this country. But I wasn't happy as a teacher. I mean, I had happy days. I had happy times. But overall, not happy the way I wanted to be. Um, which was part of the motivation for heading towards talent work as well. Which I did also sign up for today with one agency and I'm meeting with another one on Saturday um, because I think I should do something that I love and something that I really care about and um, that's absolutely something that I love so I'm going to try for that um, in the meantime I'm going to try for this office stuff I'm going to try something that's going to be really hard and something that's going to be challenging but I think that I think that I can do it, um, and I know a lot of people, when I say, well, a lot of people so far when I've talked about this, not my friends, but, um, a couple acquaintances, but I've mentioned this, they, they pretty much immediately go, well, unless you're fluent, you can't do it, right, but, I mean, we talked to these companies, and these companies said, 
you don't need to be fluent. You don't even need to be high level. Just do you speak some? Can you read a little? Can you write a little? Yeah, okay. <laughs> They're looking for someone who's primarily speaking and using English. Just there will be Japanese involved, which I can do that. Um, I think if people give up on it, they give up on the idea really quickly. I'm not fluent. I can't do it. You can. You can. You just have to. You gotta find it. So, um, I definitely recommend this place to anyone who's looking to change jobs in the Tokyo area or needs a new job or needs some extra jobs. Um, again, through the Tokyo Foreign Workers, the Tokyo Employment Center for Foreign Workers, um, or Employment Service for Foreign Workers. I don't know. You can look it up. Um, but yeah, they were really helpful. They were really nice. And I'm going back to see them on Thursday with my completed resumes. And um, we'll see what happens. So fingers crossed for me, please. Because these office jobs, um, they pay pretty well. And, you know, they seem like something I would really enjoy, to enjoy doing. Um, just something challenging and something new. <laughs> Completely new. Um, and something that I would really learn a lot from. So, that's where I'm at. That's your update for now. Uh, I'll probably check in maybe Thursday after the, this whole stuff. And, um, yeah. Fingers crossed for me, guys. I really could use it. Thanks. <laughs>